Hello friends, today we are going to start another module which is module 4 and here we will be discussing about bituminous mixtures. So, before we begin I wish to inform that various text information graphs and images that have been uh, used in this presentation uh, have been taken from uh, various textbooks, various reports, various specifications, journals and the general public domain search and they are greatly acknowledged. So, in this module we are going to learn various aspects related to bituminous mixtures and we will start our discussion by understanding about the production of bituminous mixtures by looking at a bituminous mixture. We will then talk about the role and desirable properties which is required from a bituminous mixture as a paving material because it has to finally uh, be laid in the pavement and it has to give satisfactory performance. We will talk about the mix design aspects, we will be talking about the Marshall mix design process and super paved mix design process and before we look into the steps of these mix design process, we will spend some time discussing about the volumetrics of uh, bituminous mixtures which basically will form a very uh, critical or an important part of this module. Then we will briefly touch upon some advanced concepts which are more popular uh, in the recent times. Uh, that is development of performance based mix design. Uh, we will also talk about various laboratory investigations which are carried out to characterize the bituminous mixtures, to characterize the performance of the bituminous mixtures. Then uh, we will also discuss about the mix design concepts related to hot recycled mixtures. Again uh, you know a very important topic to be discussed and we will also briefly discuss about the mix design process of cold bituminous mixture. So, where cold indicates that we will be using emulsions and foam bitumen for the production of these mixtures. So, let us start today by discussing about the production of bituminous mixture. So, uh, before I discuss about the production of bituminous mixture, let us first understand what is in asphalt or bituminous mixture. So, both the terms are used interchangeably. Let us understand the definition of this mixture. So, uh, in simple terms we can define a bituminous mixture as a heated mixture of aggregates. So, aggregates are heated before it is mixed. So, heated mixture of aggregates uniformly mixed and coated with asphalt binder. So, here we have a binder which is the bitumen or the asphalt binder which will be mixed with heated aggregates and in fact this binder will also be in heated state because bitumen is a viscoelastic material. and to make it fluid, to make it workable, to mix it with aggregates properly, we have to heat it to elevated temperatures. So, we have bitumen, we have mineral aggregates which are graded because there is a specific gradation which we are targeting for and once we will mix them, it will appear like a loose mixture and this mixture will be further laid, uh, it will be spreaded on the uh, surface of the uh, pavement and it will be compacted using specific type of rollers. Before I uh, move forward, I will just uh, try to visually show you bituminous mixture which I have also showed in the previous module where we discussed about uh, bitumen that this mixture is made up of graded mineral aggregates and bitumen. So, you can see this is a very dense mixture which I am showing here today and but we can have mixture with various gradations, various surface characteristics or and various volumetrics as well. We will discuss more about it. So, depending on the aggregate gradation which we are choosing for making the bituminous mixture for example. So, this mixture which I am holding in my hand, this is a dense mixture you can see the surface is very smooth alright. So, depending on the gradation we can have different types of mixture. For example, I have another mixture uh, which is a uh, bitumen rich mixture uh, more of gap graded in nature, I am holding it using a paper. Uh, just to uh, save my hand from getting dirty here. You can see that this is a coarse graded mixture and you can see that we have coarse particles and very high bitumen content if you can see the shine in the mix. So, this is a gap graded mix uh, which is uh, produced. So, depending on the gradation we can have different types of mix. We can have dense graded mixtures where the design air void is approximately in the range of uh, 3 to 5 percent. We can have open graded mixtures such as open graded friction courses or asphalt treated permeable base and these mixtures have higher void content of around 
18 to 22 percent. Now, these are very special mixtures which are designed either to facilitate high permeability of water or it is also used to absorb sound in the surface uh, layer. We can also have gap graded mixtures. I have already discussed about different types of aggregate gradation. So, in gap graded mixtures, we have coarse aggregate and we have fine aggregate. The intermediate size is usually missing. So, we have high content of coarse aggregate, high binder content and high filler content. All right. So, these mixes usually have very uh, excellent stone to stone contact and give good resistance to rutting. So, uh, these mixtures are plotted uh, corresponding to the maximum density line here as you can see in the y axis you have percent passing and this is the normalized sieve size raised to the power 0.45 and you can see that this uh, black dark line is the maximum density line. This brown line which I have drawn this one this is a well graded structure. So, you, this indicates a dense gradation. We have a gap graded mix which is shown here and you can see the intermediate size is uh, not very prominent. We have aggregates from lower sizes and higher sizes and then we have uh, open graded friction cores which is more of a poorly graded mixture which shows that there are aggregates mostly of single sized in this particular gradation. So, uh, how are these mixes actually produced? We have two different types of production which we have to discuss which we have to understand. One production is something which we do in the lab and we expect that similar mixture can be produced in the plant and give it can be compacted in the field. So, we have laboratory production of HMA in which mixes are produced through some form of compaction process because if you see this mix, uh, this is a, a cylindrical mixture and this occupies some volume which means that we have to compact it so that it achieves the desired volumetric characteristics. Mixes in the laboratory are produced through some form of compaction. Various forms of compaction can be there depending on the type of mix design we are using and this is also interesting because here is one question that if you are going to produce a mix which is to perform in the uh, field then why are we adopting different forms of compaction. Uh, the reason is because uh, the mix design methodology or the process of compaction have evolved over a period of time. Uh, during the earlier days one type of compaction was more popular uh, and mixed designs were developed based on that form of compaction. Later when more researches were carried out new mixed design methods developed and in the mixed design they developed new process of compaction. And of course, there are reasons why these new process of compactions were developed I will talk about uh, them. But generally there are three forms of compaction impact compaction gyratory compaction and kneading compaction. In impact compaction as the name suggests we are going to produce a mix by giving the impact to the mixture. There will be a weight which I will throw from some height to impact the mixture which will be present in a cylindrical mold and due to this impact force this mixture will be compacted within the mold. So, that is impact compaction. So, normally we use a Marshall compactor which is shown here. Uh, this image has been taken from um, a, a random search in the internet. So, uh, you see we have cylindrical mold here and this is the compactor and this is basically the hammer. So, this can be lifted up and it can be thrown um, down. Uh, so, we have a specific process, specific weight of the hammer, specific height of fall which we will discuss during the mix design process. All right. So, today we are just looking at the process of compacting. Then we have gyratory compactor this is used in the this is used in the Marshall mix design which is popularly used in India. Then we have gyratory compaction which is used in the super pave mix design. So, here uh, we are not giving any impact load for compaction of the mixes. What we are doing on the loose mixture let us say if this is a loose mixture on the loose mixture we will have a load here which will be in contact with the surface of this loose mixture and then it will apply a gyratory, gyratory action uh, at some angle. If you can see in this picture that there is some angle at which the gyratory action or the, the force to compact is applied. That will be applied to again compact the mixture to a given density. Uh, now, few limited research have indicated this form of compaction is better than the impact compaction in the sense that the asphalt mixture which is produced using this form of compaction is found to be a close replica of what 
is being produced in the field under the action of the rollers. But because in the field after we lay the uh, loose uh, mixture, we are using roller compactors to compact it. So, then uh, under this roller compactors because of the energy which we are applying, the aggregate particles will have certain form of orientation. So, when you try to see that orientation and compare it with the uh, orientation of the laboratory under different types of compaction, researchers have found that uh, gyratory compaction gives a better representation of that aggregate orientation and therefore, is a, a better representation of the actual field mix which is produced. Uh, we will discuss more about it and then we have kneading compaction which is typically used in heavy mix design, but this mix design we are not going to discuss in detail because uh, this is no uh, longer in use presently. So, the heavy mix design uh, kneading compaction is used. In the kneading compaction we have temper foot. So, the compaction is not from a significant height, but from some height we have a temper foot which applies a kneading action to compact the uh, mix. All right. So, again the idea of kneading compaction was to produce a mix which could better replicate the mix which is produced uh, under the rollers. Whatever be the compaction process which we use, the final idea or target should be to produce mixes which are similar to what can be produced in the field. Now, how much we are going to compact the mix, what should be the final density of the mix which we compact. Now, usually the mixes are compacted to achieve a level of density which will be present in the field after years of compaction, which means that when I am doing the construction, I am compacting the mix to a particular density. All right. Let us say that the initial density at which I am compacting the mix in the field is at 6 to 8 percent. This is the uh, air void within the mixture. I am just uh, giving 94 percent of compaction. So, which means 6 percent air voids are there. This is not the design mix which I am going to produce in the laboratory. After I compact the mix in the field, when I open it to traffic, there will be further secondary compaction uh, of the mix. So, the air void of the mix will reduce over a period of time under the action of the moving traffic and then it will stabilize to a particular level. Beyond that, there will be no reduction in the uh, density ideally. Let us say that the final density is air void which is reached is 4 percent. So, this is the mix which I am going to produce in the laboratory. All right. So, this is always a confusion that students ask that we are producing the mix at 4 percent air void in the laboratory, but in the field I am getting a mix which is having 6 to 8 percent air void. Why is the case? The case and what is the reason? The reason is that our performance depends on the mix after it has undergone the secondary compaction. So, I am looking for that particular mix. So, that is why I am interested to produce the design mix which I will achieve in the field after years of compaction. Okay. So, this is again one point which we have to remember. Now, the mix which we produced in the laboratory will be assessed through volumetric analysis and in addition to that we will also conduct some mechanical test and also some performance test to understand the response of the uh, mix under different conditions. In laboratory, in contrast to what we see in the field and the plant, the production is more controlled. For example, if, even if you talk about batching the aggregates, we do more, more fractionation than what is typically present in the mixing plant. In mixing plant, let us say you have 2 to 3 stockpiles or 3 to 4 stockpiles which has to be blended. In the laboratory, we usually go for more number of fractionation so that we can control the mixture and study the actual property of the design mix. So, as we have now discussed about the production uh, in the laboratory, let us see how the asphalt mixtures are produced in the field. So, when I say field, it comprises basically of two parts. The first part is the production of the loose asphalt mixture in the uh, hot mix plant followed by the transportation of this hot mix asphalt using trucks to the site and at the site we compact it using uh, rollers and then uh, paver and screed. So, that we will discuss as we move forward. So, let us start our discussion with what happens in the plant. In the plant, the uh, aim is to produce a mix that will meet the uh, requirement of the job mix formula. Now, this job mix formula is the mix design, uh, the final mix design which we complete in the laboratory. 
So, once we have done all the analysis through laboratory testing, through laboratory measurements, we will supply the mixed design sheet and the same sheet has to be followed accurately in the plant to obtain or to produce the same uh, mixture uh, because the performance of the mixture which is produced uh, depends a lot on the volumetrics of the uh, bituminous mixture and that is why it is important that the values of various parameters which we have achieved in the lab should also be present in the final mix which is going to be laid in the field. There are generally two types of plant using which the hot mix asphalt can be produced. One is the drum mix plant and the other is the batch mix plant. So, these are two pictures showing uh, the drum mix plant this one and this picture is an outline of batch mix plant. So, um, in the drum mix plant the ingredients they are added, they are dried and they are mixed in a single drum. So, this is the drum which you are seeing on the screen now. So, only one drum the aggregates will be dried, it will be added with the binder, it will be mixed with the binder and actually it also will be weighed in the same drum. All right. Uh, whereas, in batch mix plant the ingredients they are pre weighed and they are added in a separate pug mill. So, there is a pug mill here to mix the aggregate uh, particles uh, with the bitumen, different uh, sizes and uh, quantity of aggregate with the bitumen. So, again we will talk about the details. These are two types of plant which can be used for the production of asphalt mixture. Some of the basic unit of this plant it includes the cold feeder bean. Now, cold feeder bean will be present both in the drum mix plant and the batch mix uh, plant. So, this cold feeder beans they are charged with aggregates using a front loader, uh, using a truck, they will charge these beans with different uh, sizes of aggregate. So, these beans they have slanted sides uh, with vibrators which uh, will keep constant supply of aggregate. So, you can see here uh, that the aggregates are supplied below the bin and there are vibrators so that aggregates are not stuck in the bin. Uh, the bins also have an adjustable gate and uh, variable speed feeder to control uh, the quantity of aggregate uh, that comes at the bottom of the bin and it, it is gathered in the conveyor belt. So, there is a conveyor belt which will run uh, below the bin which you can see here and from this gathering conveyor belt the material is uh, brought to the cold feed elevator. So, this is the cold feed elevator here uh, in which the material will be brought together of different sizes and in the uh, drum mix plant this cold feed elevator also have an automatic weighing system. So, the cold feeder elevator they have an automatic weighing system and using this weighing system appropriate quantity of aggregate uh, will be further moved uh, to the drum for drying. And in fact, uh, this conveyor, the, this measurement of the aggregate weight, it can be controlled uh, remotely using a system because before entering the drying drum, the aggregate will also have moisture. So, the adjustment of moisture is also made uh, when the uh, aggregates move from the cold feeder bins to this elevator. All right. So, then the aggregate goes inside the drum which you see here, this is the drum. In the drum mix plant, there can be two types of movement of the aggregate inside the drum. One is called as the parallel flow and the other is called as counter flow. So, before I explain parallel flow and counter flow, let me just tell you that in this drum, we have a heating system. So, the primary purpose of the drum is to dry the aggregates and since it is a drum mix plant, the mixing of the aggregate with the bitumen will also take place in the same drum. Let us say can be considered as two part system. What happens in a typical drum? One thing is that this drum will continuously rotate about its horizontal axis and then uh, there is gas system which is provide the flame and the flame can be from one side and the aggregates can either move from here to here or it can come against the flame. It can be of both the type. So, in the parallel flow, the aggregates are fed from the burner side. So, if this is the burner side, then the aggregates are fed from the burner side and then the aggregate moves through this drum and 
and let us say if this is the discharge end. So, at approximately one third distance from the discharge end, we have the bitumen feeding system. So, the bitumen will be feeded here. So, the aggregates move here at this location the bitumen is feeded and uh, then it is mixed with the uh, aggregate uh, in this location and then finally, the entire mixture will get discharged from here. And at the same location uh, very near to the uh, bitumen, uh, we also will add filler. Uh, now, one of the reason of adding filler in the close proximity of the binder uh, is to uh, you know trap the fines because the fines will keep on moving due to the action of the heat inside and it is important to trap this filler. So, this filler will be trapped by the bitumen which will coat it all right. So, uh, finally, the mix will come out from the discharge end and after coming from the uh, discharge uh, end it can be taken by a conveyor belt uh, which you can see here conveyor belt and it can be stored in the silo. So, silo is basically the storage unit because finally, the mix has to be transported to the site all right. So, uh, it is transported using trucks. So, it may happen that truck will take some time to go to the site and come back and of course, there are several number of trucks. So, depending on the movement time uh, and what whatever you know situation is at the field, the speed at which the construction is going on depending on that. Uh, there can be some waiting time and but the production uh, in the mixing plant is continuous. So, in order to store the mix uh, to facilitate uh, this uh, time gap, we can store the mix inside this tower which is called as silo and as the trucks arrive, we have gates beneath the silo, it will open, it will load the truck with the hot mix asphalt and then the truck will go to the site. So, this is the process. On the other hand, if you talk about the counter flow drum, in the counter flow drum it is generally a double barrel type drum. When I say double barrel which means the drum itself is divided into two parts, okay. the drum is divided into two parts. So, the aggregate first enters against the exhaust gas. So, if the aggregate is entering here, so the exhaust gas is provided on this side. All right. So, the aggregate uh, enters against the exhaust gas, it is heated inside the inner drum. So, this is the inner drum and then it travels to the outer drum, where it is mixed with the binder and we, we can have some paddles inside, uh, which will move along with the drum. So, the drum is also moving, the paddles are facilitating the mixing of aggregates and binder and again uh, similarly to what we have discussed, uh, it will come out from the discharge end and it can be either uh, sent to the truck or to the storage silo. All right. This is the you know simple process of explaining what happens in a drum mix plant. Uh, whereas, in a batch mix plant which you are seeing here the outline, uh, the initial part is same that we have cold feeder beans from their uh, aggregates go to the dryer. So, you can see the dryer is here. All right. So, um, and this dryer this is usually a counter flow system. So, aggregate is moving against the exhaust gas. Um, this dryer is usually a has a counter flow system and after coming out uh, because we are not adding bitumen in the drum, bitumen is added separately. So, after coming out from the discharge end, it is sent to the hot elevator. So, this is the hot elevator. So, aggregates uh, will be sent uh, uh, in the hot elevator to the top of the batch tower and here the I will show you probably in the next slide that uh, here we have uh, different slots. Here we have different slots and we have a, a vibratory system and we have screens placed here. So, we have a we have vibratory screens which will uh, you know uh, divide the aggregate which is coming in into different sizes. Uh, so, uh, we have sieves here different sizes of sieves. So, it will finally, store the uh, aggregates of different sizes and we can apply a remote control here to uh, to decide how much aggregate has to come out and has to be mixed with the bitumen. So, all the weighing system is co controlled remotely, the weighing system of the aggregate, the weighing system of the binder, the weighing system of the filler. So, uh, in the same tower at some uh, as point, the filler and bitumen are also added 
and again uh, further we can as I said we can control the weights. So, depending on the job mix formula the respective weight of different sizes uh, will be allowed to move further uh, where it will uh, come in contact with the bitumen and the fines and it will be mixed. So, this mixing unit it is called as pug mill. Okay. So, in pug mill uh, the bitumen uh, aggregates and the fine material they will come in contact with each other and they will be mixed for few seconds that depends from uh, you know case to case that how long we are allowing the uh, uh, mixing to take place and that, that also affects the uh, cost of the entire uh, operation of the batch mix plant. And finally, uh, we do the same thing we will transfer uh, this uh, mix which is produced here to the storage silo all right and then it can further be transferred to the trucks this is clear that how uh, things uh, what are the different uh, you know units of drum mix plant and batch mix plant. I will try to explain it again using different uh, picture uh, in a different slide uh, alright. So, I hope this is clear. <coughs> so, uh, in the in the plant what we are basically doing we are preparing loose bituminous mixture. So, up to loose bituminous mixture everything happens in the plant that is proportioning of aggregates and mixing of hot uh, drying of aggregates uh, and, and mixing of aggregates bitumen and fillers. Uh, one more thing which probably I missed uh, is that uh, in that the filler is the movement of the filler or the amount of filler uh, is also controlled through the you know bag house which is placed here uh, and this also controls the uh, pollution system which may arise because of the uh, because of the movement of the fine particles. Uh, so, that also is controlled um, in, in separately in the plant. These are some pictures uh, taken uh, from uh, you know one of the site visits which we did few years back. I have a video also which I will play. I have few videos uh, available presently. So, I will try to uh, play that. The first picture which you see here this is basically a uh, the, the cold feeder bean part and you can see uh, that how uh, you know the from the cold from beneath the cold feeder bean the aggregates are traveling through the conveyor belt and it will be taken further to the elevator which will is connected to the uh, drying drum. And you know th there can be number of cold feeder beans depending on the number of stockpiles. And from the cold feeder bean the aggregates are further transferred to this from this elevator to the um, which you can see in the second picture that the aggregates are traveling and it is it goes to the uh, drying drum. Now, uh, again in this picture you must be wondering that there are multiple uh, you know a conveyor belt here. So, sometimes uh, uh, in the batch mix plant what we do for example, if some specific let us say wrap has to be added then they are not added directly with the uh, normal movement of the aggregates they are added separately. So, for that we can have separate conveyor belt system. Then finally, after coming from the uh, I mean through the elevator uh, the uh, the aggregate will be uh, will come to this drying drum which you see here in the third picture and this drying drum as you can see uh, you have a specific length and you have a specific diameter. So, this length to diameter ratio it varies uh, depending on the type of plant and typically let us say the uh, length to diameter ratio is approximately around like 4 is to 1 to maybe it is uh, 6 is to 1. Uh, typically. So, it depends from it varies from plant to plant and I also have a video here just to show how the drum keeps uh, rotating about the uh, horizontal axis. So, this is uh, I am just trying to play it here. So, you can see that how uh, this drum is uh, rotating here and uh, we have a discharge end and from the discharge end uh, this uh, heated aggregates will be taken um, to the hot elevator which you can see here this is the hot elevator and above the hot elevator here basically we will have vibratory screens which will separate the aggregates into different sizes and it will be stored there and then uh, you know we can control the movement of these aggregates depending on the job mix formula and beneath that we have a system where the bitumen uh, will further be feeded along with the fines and uh, the aggregates which come from the top and they will be sent to this pug mill here for mixing. And from the uh, pug mill it can be directly discharged to the truck here which will be standing here otherwise it can also be you know sent 
uh, further uh, to the storage si silo if, if there is a delay in the uh, um, you know a movement of the trucks. So, uh, when I was saying that I will try to explain the uh, what happens at inside the hot elevator. So, you can see that uh, the hot aggregates enter enters here and these are different uh, screens of or sieves you can say. And when this keeps on vibrating of course, you can understand that aggregates of different sizes will travel uh, and it will be re retained in the respective sieves depending on the size. And from each sieve we have a different unit from where to where it can be collected separately and it can be kept. And then we can further allow the movement of these aggregates depending on the job mix formula and then it will meet the bitumen and the fine uh, bitumen and the fillers it will be then uh, mixed in the pug mill. This is a video so I will try to play the video to explain uh, just to try to visually uh, explain how what happens inside the pug mill. So, you can see that how the aggregates uh, are, are being uh, are moving inside all right and it is being mixed with bitumen. So, initially it will appear to be dry, but after few seconds you can see a very smooth mixture which is very which will be very clear in the second video. So, I think now uh, it is pretty clear how the color has changed to more of uniform black in uh, nature and uh, after few seconds of mixing here you can see uh, how things are happening. So, this mixture has been prepared it is now finally traveling and it will be sent to the storage silo here all right and then it will first discharge the entire material and it will come back again to collect uh, you know uh, further material so i hope that it's clear that how things are happening during the production of uh, hot mix asphalt in the plant well uh, these are again uh, two pictures taken uh, randomly from internet search uh, with with you know clear indication about different units of a of a drum mix plant um, and the batch mix plant. So here uh, I will just try to repeat few uh, things which we have discussed about the drum mix plant uh, and the uh, batch mix plant. So in the drum mix plant, let us say I am talking about the drum mix plant here, and I am talking about the parallel flow system. All right. So, uh, in the parallel flow system we uh, what happens that the feeder beans will store the aggregate separately. So, we will have feeder beans to uh, store the aggregates uh, separately and the aggregates will be collected by the gathering belt. So, we will have a gathering uh, belt to collect the, the aggregates and then uh, uh, and, and into the vibratory screen. And then we have a single deck vibratory screen that removes oversized material before the aggregates reach the charging conveyor. So, it will reach the elevator here all right. So, the charging uh, uh, conveyor it will transfer the aggregates after weighing. So, we will have a weighing system here. So, after weighing it will uh, transfer the aggregate to the drum. Uh, to the drum and aggregates will enter the drum from the burner end. So, enters from burner end because this is a parallel flow system all right and um, first half of the drum uh, does the heating. So, as I said the, the drum has can be considered uh, you know in, in different sections. So, the first uh, half of the drum typically it will uh, facilitate the heating. Uh, and the mixing will take place in the uh, second half of the drum uh, and the hot mix asphalt will come out from the other end and it will be discharged either into the truck or into the silo. So, from here it will go either to the silo or to the truck directly all right. So, this is about the um, parallel flow whereas, uh, in the counter flow the first part remains the same, the second part remains the uh, same the third part also remains the same. So, up to here everything is same. Then here the aggregate enters um, the, the first drum from the opposite end. So, it enters from opposite end opposite to the burner all right and only drying takes place in the first drum. So, this is a two drum system. So, first drum only drying will take place all right and the mixing takes place uh, in the second drum or second chamber
all right. Um, then finally, the hot mix asphalt. Now the, the next process is same that it will be it will come out from the discharge end and it will be either stored in the silo or uh, sent directly to the truck. So, this is about a drum mix. Uh, if we just uh, have to re, uh, recap about the uh, batch mix plant. So, here also the first part is same that the feeder bin will store the aggregate separately and aggregate will be collected by the gathering, gathering belt uh, below the bins and into the vibratory screen. Uh, then the second part also remains the same that we have single deck vibratory screen that will remove the oversized material before it enters the charging conveyor and the dryer. Now here so point 1 and 2 it remains the same. Now here we are not concerned about the weighing part alright. So this weighing which we have discussed uh, this is this does not happen here in the batch mix plant. So here then aggregate enters the drum so the third part is basically drying. So aggregate will enter the drum from the opposite side uh, counter flow uh, and only drying will take place only drying in the drum, in the entire drum, alright. So from here the heated aggregates are taken to the uh, multi deck vibratory screen. So here it is taken to the from hot elevator to uh, multi deck vibratory screen, alright. So here the weighing will take place. So, after the aggregate pass the vibratory screen they are stored in separate bins so which I showed you in the previous uh, slide that they can be stored uh, in different uh, uh, bins as per their size and then the as then the weighing will be weighing will take place weighing will take place and it will be weighed separately and it will be led uh, it will be fed into the mixing unit which is the basically the pug mill all right. So, bitumen uh, minerals and you know other materials for example, if we have wrap uh, they are weighed separately before it is added to the mixing unit. So, which I have already explained. Uh, so, and then uh, after mixing it is further sent to uh, truck or to silo alright. So, I hope again this process is clear to you. Uh, now, uh, you know usually in the pavement material class this is uh, something which uh, is always confusing uh, uh, for for the students because they are not able to visualize what happens in the plant for mixing during the uh, production of a hot mix asphalt. I also have a video here uh, taken from uh, Atlas Technologies Private Limited. Uh, it is a uh, three, 3D animated video. So, I will just try to play this. It will be a few minute video um, and this will also clarify uh, you know whatever we have discussed verbally. So, I think visually it will be more comfortable for you to understand what happens uh, in the mixing plant. So, let us just uh, you know play this video and try to understand. So, here you can see you know a complete uh, a, a, you know a complete picture of the batch mix plant. So, this is a batch mix plant basically with different units. So, these are the cold feeder beans. from the feeder bin it goes to the conveyor belt and we have vibratory screens here to control the movement. So, this is what happens inside the drying drum. So, you can see that on the on the front side we have the burner and the aggregates are moving against the burner. So, this is what I was saying about the bag house fines. So, they have a system of not wasting the fines. So, this this fines can be collected and it they can also be reused again. So, 
So this is how the air will move out. So this is how where the fines will be collected and it will be stored and will be later added with the uh, in the mix. And you can see that it will be later taken to the elevator uh, and it will be added with the uh, aggregates uh, at the top of the tower. So these are the aggregates which comes out from the drying drum. So this is what I was showing you in the picture that we have different sizes of sieves and depending on the size of the aggregates it, it can be collected and stored in different bins which you can see here that there are different how it, it goes to different bins. So you can see that there are gates which will be controlled remotely depending on how much aggregates we want to be mixed uh, per volume of the mix. So this depends on the mix design which has been done. So now it shows what happens inside the pug mill. And finally, it will be the gates will be opened and it can go either to the storage silo or it can be loaded through the uh, trucks in the trucks. So, I hope you know uh, that uh, uh, this video makes it pretty clear. Uh, of the different uh, actions uh, or the different steps uh, which are uh, followed uh, in the mixing plant. Okay, so uh, now we will move forward and we will go to the second step that now we have prepared the mix in the plant and we will see that how this produced mix uh, is compacted in the field. So this mix is taken uh, in insulated trucks and it is fed into the paver. I will show you in the next slide uh, how a paver looks like. Here the material is fed from the hopper to the rear of the machine where the vibratory screeds it places the HMA to the requ uh, required elevation. So in the paver we have a system where uh, you know uh, using, using uh, augers we can uh, spread the material. So there will be some auger system I will show you it in the next slide um, where and this augers will continuously keep on moving and it will spread the loose mixtures uh, laterally and to the required uh, uh, loose elevation 
and it will apply some uh, uh, you know a, a little compaction to the mix. Uh, again a, 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 an example I will show you in the next slide. So, once this loose mix has been spreaded laterally uh, to the required mat, uh, then we will start the compaction and the compaction is done using rollers. All right. So, here we have to ensure the primary uh, objective here is that the compactive forces because of the rollers, it should exceed the resistance to compaction by the mixture. So, the roller should be capable enough to compacting the mix to the required density. Now, that is the main purpose and here uh, also one more important thing is that the temperature is very important because the compaction uh, effort required and the level of compaction or density which will be achieved is also a function of the temperature at which the compaction is being done. All right. So, as I mentioned the final objective is to uh, achieve the specified uh, density and to provide a smooth surface. All right. So, these two objectives uh, are fulfilled using different uh, steps of rolling. Uh, this rolling are usually uh, termed as breakdown rolling, we have intermediate rolling and we have finish rolling. Now, what is a uh, breakdown rolling that is the initial rolling that aggregates are uh, you know in loose state now. So, I will do a breakdown rolling so the, that the aggregates can be uh, you know uh, allowed to move about each other and to uh, orient itself properly within the uh, in the uh, mix. So, that can be done using breakdown rollers. So, breakdown rollers are usually steel wheeled rollers or and it can be either static or it can be vibratory. It is usually a uh, vibratory type uh, roller. All right. Uh, sometimes pneumatic tire roller are also used only in special cases, but generally steel wheeled uh, rollers are used. And as I mentioned that uh, the breakdown rolling is usually done uh, using a vibration. So, you ha we, we have to set a specified frequency at which the vibration will take place and it will um, compact uh, the, the uh, mat which is being uh, laid using the paver. The main purpose of intermediate ruling is to achieve the required density. So, here a pneumatic tire roller is uh, used. So, this is called as a uh, term denoted as PTR. So, the intermediate roller is done using PTR. So, the advantage of using PTR is we can achieve a very uh, dense uh, surface. Uh, I mean the appropriate density can be achieved and that too within a shorter period of time in comparison to um, uh, steel wheel roller. Uh, where the uh, uniformity in density is not very accurate. And finally, we do the finish rolling which is uh, done using a steel wheel roller which is a static steel wheel roller and the main purpose of doing finish rolling is to remove the, um, uh, the tire marks of the PTR uh, which, which will occur after the intermediate rolling and also to re remove if there are any further surface undulations in the pavement. So, that is done using a finisher. So, you can see that there it is a three step process breakdown rolling, intermediate rolling and finish rolling. So, again just a uh, recap that breakdown rollers are used to um, orient the aggregate particles properly to facilitate compaction. Intermediate rolling we want to achieve our target density. So, we use a pneumatic tire roller and the main purpose of doing finish rolling is to remove any irregularities from the surface and uh, also to uh, remove the uh, marks of the PTR from the surface. Uh, so, this will ensure a smooth riding surface in the pavement. This picture is showing that how the aggregates uh, and we have also seen in the video. So, it is loaded into the truck. So, here you see uh, you know again uh, there can be different ways of loading in the truck, but usually the mixes are loaded uh, in, in some something like this which you can see here. All right. So, this form of loading it ensures that uh, the segregation is not very high. Instead of lo loading everything at one place, here the, the segregation of the material will be high. So, therefore, you know a multiple step uh, um, discharge is um, used uh, typically for loading the truck. All right. So, after uh, loading this truck you can see uh, here that uh, the material is discharged. So, this is the paver, uh, it is discharged uh, on the rear side uh, of the paver and here uh, 
this uh, this paver has screed system and auger system which will uh, which will place the loose mixture to the required height and also will laterally spread this mixture so i have a small video here to just show you how the auger system actually works now here you can see that how uh, after the discharge uh, and it's it it goes to the um, front side and then uh, here you will see the auger system moving and how it uh, spreads the mix all right So, you can see the augers moving here and it is uh, moving the mix uh, laterally so that the loose mixture can be properly laid. And then finally, uh, the surface will look something like this after the paver has spreaded uh, the mix. All right. And then we will uh, start compacting. Uh, you can see that there is a this is the breakdown rolling and after that we will do an um, intermediate uh, rolling. Uh, using a uh, pneumatic tire rollers which you can see here and again we will use a static uh, wheel roller to uh, you know complete the surface. So, this is a finished surface which you can see uh, on one side all right. So, as I mentioned temperature is very important during compaction though. So, this should be continuously monitored and we should also check the final uh, thickness uh, as per the design specification. So, uh, after compaction we have to ensure that the required depth is, is reached. So, uh, you know these are some of the steps um, which, which gives us uh, an idea about the production of the bituminous mixtures in the uh, plant and then in the uh, final compaction in the field. Okay, so, we will stop here today. So, uh, just uh, to recall that we have discussed about the production of bituminous mixtures, we have talked about the production steps in the laboratory, the importance of production in the laboratory and then the production uh, in the plant and subsequent compaction in the field. And uh, we have also discussed about the different types of plants, uh, drum mix uh, plant and batch mix plant. And we have uh, briefly discussed about the uh, procedure which are adopted uh, uh, corresponding to different units uh, in, in these uh, mixing plants. And we have also tried to talk, uh, talk about the difference uh, in the production process. Uh, so, uh, in the next uh, presentation, we will talk about the uh, mix design process. We will try to understand the important properties which are desired from hot mix asphalt and based on these desirable properties, how we aim towards uh, doing a, a rational mix design uh, for the bituminous mixtures. Thank you.